An anonymous questioner says, I get lots of wiswas about kufr. I think many things are kufr that probably are haram or maybe halal. If I do one of these things, do I say the shahada again? What happens if I don't? To tell you the truth, I get hundreds, literally hundreds of similar questions every week. There is a big problem with a lot of the Muslims. And I get questions like, my brother was speaking, so I admonished him in a tone similar to my elder brother. And I was imitating my elder brother when talking. Is this kufr? Subhanallah. Where, where is kufr? Someone says, and another question. I saw a man holding a hot piece of iron with three fingers. And it was so hot he dropped it. So I smiled. And then I remembered that the Prophet used to eat with three fingers. So did I commit kufr? What is the relation between dropping a hot piece of metal that he was holding with three fingers, with the Prophet eating with three fingers, with you smiling? So at the end of the day, you come to a conclusion that there is a portion of Muslims who have allowed Satan to overcome their thoughts and their thinking process to the extent that he plays with them like children play with a football. Everything around them is doubtful and they don't know is it kufr or not. I heard someone calling the adhan and I smiled. I don't know if I should say the shahada or not. And they keep on going and going. Akhi and ukhti. My brother and my sister, my son and my daughter, you have to save yourselves before it's too late. Knowledge is your beacon in life. Knowledge is the light that disperses all darkness around you. When you do not have this knowledge, this is when shaitan comes. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the virtue of a scholar is far greater than 70 worshippers. Because 70 worshippers are not immune from the devils playing with their minds. On the contrary, they can easily fall into his traps. While a scholar, with the grace of Allah, and after that with the knowledge that Allah has bestowed upon him, he can tell what's right and what's wrong. And this is why when you keep on thinking, does this nullify my Islam or not? This means that you have issues, you have a problem. And this would not end here. It would cascade down until it ruins your entire life. And you have to be careful. You don't want to end up like this. So what do I do? Number one. Make a lot, of, a lot of dua. The well-known dua. When you stand up for night prayer. Allahumma rabba jibreela wa israfeela wa mikaela fatira samawati wal ardi alima al ghaybi wa shahada. Anta tahkumu bayda ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtalifun. Ihdini. So you're asking Allah for guidance with this beautiful dua which I don't have time to translate. Check it out in Fortress of the Muslim. Make a lot of dua in your sujood. That Allah guides you, enlightens you, educates you. Secondly, you have to learn your aqeedah. You have to learn the basis of your religion. So first of all, you have to learn Allah's beautiful names and attributes. You have to recite the Quran with contemplation, knowing the tafsir. You have to read the sunnah of the Prophet so that you can learn what consists of kufr and what does not. And you have to read the books of Aqeedah, such as Kitab al-Tawheed, Kashf al-Shubuhat, um, also to learn what actually nullifies your Islam.
like nawaqud al-islam the things that nullify islam the 10 which sheikh muhammad ibn abdul wahab compi uh, compiled and others once you have a chopper or a, a helicopter view over these things you'll be inshallah safe and sound